Yesterday I had an errand to run, and I figured out about how much time it would take me and set off to accomplish my task. Unbeknownst to me, the one stretch of one lane road that I had to go down to to arrive at my destination was being worked on. When I got to that spot, I saw an excavator working on the road, going about his task methodically, doing a good job, I'm sure, blocking the entire road so that no traffic could pass in either direction. And there was no other way to get to where I was going, so I just had to sit there and wait until he decided to pull off to the side so that the traffic could get by. I knew I had to come back out the same way, so I was wondering if he would still be blocking my path on the way out. Well, the good news is he was not. The bad news was that in his place there was a cement mixer, and evidently he had just arrived and taken up position where he was now blocking the entire road, was unloading his load of cement, after which he got out and had to hose down his chute and his equipment and then stow away all of the gear and then get papers signed and then finally he decided it was time for him to move his truck so that the traffic could get by. Now granted this is a rem remote location there weren't a lot of people waiting but all told it added about 45 minutes to my task. Many of you know that I struggle with patience, have for most of my life. God's been working on me for a long time now, and I am getting a little bit better, but sometimes I'm still not very patient. In that time that I had sitting there yesterday, I did have time to think about several passages that God uses to speak to me about patience, and I'm going to share one of those with you now. It's from Romans, the eighth chapter. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. I know I'm not the only one struggling with patience these days. We're waiting for things to get back to some degree of normalcy. We're waiting for things to open up again, for people to be able to go out and live their lives. Are we waiting patiently? Maybe sometimes, maybe others not. We feel the same kind of frustration Paul was writing about here in Romans. We groan inwardly and outwardly. God's telling us to be patient. Now, in this passage, he's talking about knowing what we have in store for us ultimately. But I think these words can also speak to us in the lack of patience that we're feeling right now with this pandemic. We need to be patient and trust that God is still the one who's in charge of it all. And we have hope, hope of the deliverance that he will provide. We know he's given us the greatest deliverance that we need, the deliverance from our sins. He'll give us every other deliverance we need as well. So let's all work on being a little more patient these days. The end is in sight. God's blessings be with you today. Let's pray. Father, remind me that even though I get frustrated, even though I lack patience, you've promised good things to those who
who are yours. Help me to believe the promises of your word. Help me to take them to heart. And may those words that you have said change me. Change my behavior. Make me be more like the person you want me to be. I ask this help in the name of the one you sent to die to pay for my sins. My Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God's blessings be with you today.